Good morning, church. I'm so excited that you're here this morning. I wish we could all be together in the auditorium this morning, but we're not. And so I'm, I'm excited to be with you as you're in your living room or your bedroom or your kitchen. I'm guessing a couple of you are still in your pajamas, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you can do that. Uh, don't try to do that the next time we worship together, but that's okay for you to do that this morning. We're excited about that. I really want us to begin our worship with a passage of Scripture, Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. I know this is going to sound a little strange to you. You're used to, if you're here with me, that you we'd sometimes say that together. And this morning, I want us to do that. Even though you're in your, your living room, you're in your PJs, I still would like for us to do that. And so if you would, say this passage with me and allow it to absorb into your soul. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. As I often do, I invite the children to come down front. And uh, I, children, sixth grade and below, I'd love for you to come down front. Obviously, you're not going to be able to do that in the auditorium. But moms, dads, if you would make sure that your kids are right up as close to the television or whatever device you're using, that, that would be great. I would really appreciate that. And, and guys, as you come down front, I, I, I miss that you're not right there, that I can't reach out and touch you. And and say hi to you and give you a high five, but uh, I'm glad that we get to have this conversation. And so as we have this conversation, I want to tell you this incredible story. It's about this, well, I need you to think about something for a minute. Before I tell you the story, I, I want you to think about, I want you to think about a, a man who's never been able to see. Just think about what that would be like. Because I mean, for as long as you can remember, you can see, you can, you can smell, and whatever you smell, you can see it. Whatever you hear, you can see it. Whatever you taste, you can see it. Especially when you don't like it and you spit it out. But then also, did I already say hear? Yeah, but you get what I'm saying. Whatever it is that all the other senses, I get to see it. But I want to tell you about a story about a man born blind. For all of his life, and he was an adult by the time Jesus met him. And he had... He had never been able to see. Whatever he tasted, he couldn't see. Whatever he smelled, he couldn't see. Whatever he heard, he just had to imagine. And he'd never been able to see. Jesus encounters, sees the man. And Jesus takes, spits in the dirt, and he takes some mud. And when he takes that mud, he, he puts it on the man's eyes. And then he tells the man, I want you to go to the pool called Siloam would just mean sent. So Jesus sent him to sent. He sent him to the pool. And there the man washed his, the mud from his eyes and he could see for the first time. Just imagine that for the first time in your life. You know, you can see a banana when you eat it. When you, when you listen to your brother scream at you, you can see him. What an incredible thing. And Jesus did that. But the other incredible thing was this man began to believe in Jesus. We'll talk more about it when you're sitting with your parents, but I want to just tell you some things that happened to him real quick. At first, he talked about it was a man named Jesus that healed him. And then he said he was a prophet. And then later, he's going to tell some folks he's from God. And then lastly, he's going to say he's the Christ. That's really cool. And I'm glad I could share that with you. Kind of go back and hop up on the couch with mom and dad, hop in the bed, wherever you guys are watching this morning. And I want to encourage you to do that. At this morning, as, as we uh, continue going through uh, our text, and our text is John chapter 9. So if you've got your Bibles at home and you want to turn there, that'd be awesome. A couple of the scriptures are going to pop up on the screen uh, while we're going through. the. But I want us to think about something right now. There's a lot of conversations going on. There's conversations and questions being asked from the White House to Facebook. Uh, they're being asked and talked about from New York City to Instagram, from Harvard to Snapchat. And there are things that are being talked about like, what caused COVID-19? Or what caused it to spread? Who caused COVID-19? And who co- or who covered it up, allowing it to spread? And even just down the street, another church put on their sign. 
COVID-19 is God's judgment. I think we're asking the wrong questions. And Jesus is going to help us to see that in our text this morning. He's going to help us to see what the right question is to ask. But I want us to know this morning that Christians can glorify God in all circumstances. Because Jesus is going to model that for us in the text. And He does throughout His whole life and throughout His whole ministry. And so I want us to read John chapter 9, 1 through 5 together. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. That alone ought to be comfort to us that Jesus is the light of the world. But I want us to think about something this morning that the disciples, they were looking for someone to blame for the man's blindness. They were looking for someone to blame. They asked, who sinned? Was it his parents? And we kind of think, those are... Aren't those really silly questions? And yet I could tell you there are people that ask that question even today. I I could tell you that people think those things even today. That this all happened because somebody sinned. These bad things happened because somebody sinned. But not only do they ask that, they ask, did the man sin? And that seems really crazy to us because he was born blind. And yet, they had this belief that if a child in their mother's womb, the mother went into a pagan temple, then not only did the mother sin, but so did the infant inside of her. So did the child inside of her. And so for them, these weren't silly questions. But Jesus is going to help them to see that it's the wrong question because Jesus wants them to know, Jesus wants them to see that really the question that ought to be asked is how can God's purposes be shown in this man's life? How can God's purposes be shown in this man's life? Jesus' loving act of kindness, the healing of the man, began a transformation in the man's life. I talked about it a little bit with the, the, the children when they came down front. But I I want you to know that that as we think about as as we think about what Jesus did and we think about this man's transformation, he goes and he goes to the pool scent and he washes the mud from his eyes. And then he comes back. And when he and when he returns, his neighbors, they even don't even recognize him at first. And well, maybe really is this really the guy that was born blind? And they continue a conversation with him. and, And then they eventually. They eventually ask him, well, who did this? How did this happen? And he said, a man named Jesus healed me. This blows their mind. They don't know what to do with this. So they, we've got to go to somebody else. And so they take him to the Pharisees. Those that have studied the law more than anyone else in Israel. And so they go to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees ask him, who did this? I think he's a prophet. Ah, the Pharisees scratch their head. They think, ah, you really weren't born blind. They go find the parents, ask the parents. The parents say, yeah, he was born blind. But they were afraid of the Pharisees. They don't want to be kicked out of the church or in that time called the synagogue. They don't want to be kicked out. And so they said, hey, he was born blind, but how he got his sight back, we don't know. Ask him. He's an adult. So they go back and they ask him again. He said, what? Do you want to be his disciples also? Oh, so you're one of his disciples now. And then the man said, you know, it's really strange. You think this man's a sinner. And yet we all know, incredible, this man born blind is now speaking to the Jewish leaders. We we all know God doesn't do this kind of work through sinners. He's from God. This Jesus is from God. They said, we've had enough. We've heard enough. You're out of here. And they kick him out of the synagogue. So when they kick him out of the synagogue, Jesus shows up. By the way, it's interesting that Jesus physically is not present. 
from the time he heals the man until the end of the story. He's there, he's throughout the story, but he's not physically there. Maybe something for us to latch on time to in uncertain times. When it seems like that maybe Jesus isn't there, that he really is. But anyway, so, so here we've got this man born blind. He's been kicked out of what he would, we would call the church. He's been kicked out. And so he finds himself, what I do? And here's Jesus. And Jesus begins his conversation. And before the conversation, the transformation continues. The man says, you are the Messiah, the Christ. And he bows down and he worships Jesus. He worships Jesus. I want you to know this morning, if we follow the model of Jesus, Christians can glorify God in all circumstances, even in COVID-19. In all circumstances. See, rather than looking for a culprit, how can God, we need to be asking the question, how can God's purpose, how can God be glorified in the midst of this uncertain time? Christians can pray and point to Jesus, point to God in this uncertain time because God is never changing. Think about that for a minute. Consider the words of Hebrews 13.8. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can be pointing and praying to Jesus. We can participate in acts of kindness. You can go next door and knock on your neighbor's door and check on them. Maybe, maybe you can't do that physically. Maybe you shouldn't do that physically because of health concerns. You can still call them. You can still text them. Or maybe there's somebody in the church that you're concerned about. Give them a call. Check on them. We'll talk more at the end of our service about maybe some ways that you could... Um, uh, some people you can contact if you find needs that you can't take care of yourself. But I want you to, to, to be thinking about that. Also, we can help in the community. Kathy Ham and I, Thursday, we went to Robinson Middle School, and we participated in the grab-and-go lunch for USD 501. And, and you could do that. Matter of fact, we've committed to go every Thursday, any, and, and we can take a couple of folks. And so if you'd like to go with us one day, you can do that. You can come and join us. Just let me know. But maybe you say, hey, I can't get over to Robinson. Well, there are 13 locations, 12 others in Robinson. I'm going to send that out in an email today, and you could contact those principals. And I know that, that some of them may need our help. And so we could work in the community. We can ask people, what would they like for us to pray about for them? I, I don't know about you, but right now when I go to the grocery store and I go to other businesses, I see a lot of stressed out folks. I think if we just simply ask, is there something I could pray about for you? I think they would be moved. Because they've been hearing a lot of, where's the toilet paper? They've been hearing a lot of, why are you out of hand sanitizer? But if we didn't ask those questions, but what could we pray about? You can invite folks to church. You said, Terry, now you've really lost it. There's nobody at the church building today. That's right. But you can invite them to participate in these types of worships. Uh, we don't know next week what it will look like. It's probably going to look pretty similar to this week. And so you could invite them to come to your house if you're comfortable with that, or at least give them the link to this sermon and or the sermon for next week. You could share some of the Bible studies that we're sending out. You could share some of the daily devotionals or bi-daily devotionals that are going out. But I want to encourage you to think about how we can glorify God because I believe Christians, even in this uncertain time, can glorify God because we can do that in all circumstances. Jesus showed us how to do that. And so I kind of want to transition this morning. And as we transition, I want us to think about uh, participating in our communion. So if you uh, have picked up some of the individual communion, uh, we want you to, to go ahead and grab that. And if you have your own communion at, uh, stuff at home, grab that as well. But a couple of things as we enter into the time of communion that I want us to think about. First of all, I, I want us to know that God understands trying times and He understands suffering. Jesus Himself anticipated on His journey to the cross he anticipated. He had been talking to his apostles. He had been talking to his disciples for a, quite a while about what would happen to him when he went to Jerusalem. 
He'd been talking to them. He had anticipated what would take place. He anticipated his death and burial. I, I, we look at the Garden of Gethsemane. He's praying to God. He's so overwhelmed. And there's sweat pouring, sweat as if drops of blood. And then there's the betrayal. Really all 12. Specifically Judas and Peter, but all 12. And then there's that, because of the sin he was carrying, my sin, your sin, he was separated from God. I need us to know this morning, the God who understands suffering through His own suffering invites you and me to gather around this table with Him this morning. And so as we think about that, go ahead and if you would, take the first top off. And then I, I want to read this passage. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night He was betrayed took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, He took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. I'd like for you to ask you to take that wafer and hold it in your hand and remind yourself that Jesus is the one that invited us to the table this morning. This represents His body. Let's pray. Father, thank You for Jesus coming. Thank You for His coming to show us how to live. But thank You for the fact that He was willing to die on Calvary for us. And we're thankful that His body was pierced. His body, His flesh was torn for us. As we partake of this bread, cause our hearts and minds to remember that great sacrifice. Go ahead and take the other cover off if you would. As we think about it, this cup that I hold in my hand, that you hold in your hand, this cup, the fruit of the vine that's in it, represents the blood of Jesus. Jesus, the one who invites us to this meal. The one whose blood cleanses us of our sins. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for the blood of Jesus. When we think about our sin, we think about our, our being so lost, and yet when we think about the fact that Jesus died for us, He was buried and rose again. And this morning, we're mindful that this blood reminds us of the blood that cleanses us from our sins. May we remember as this fruit of the vine pours over our lips, may we be reminded of how it flowed from the body of Jesus. It's in His name we pray. Amen. We were to gather uh, this morning at our church building. At this time, we would have been taking up a collection. Obviously, we're not going to do that this morning, but I need you to know that the ministry of the church continues. Even though that we're not coming to the church building, the ministry begin, continues. Uh, our missionaries, J Justin and Alicia in Cologne, Germany, they're still ministering to people. Uh, Max and Prisca, uh, they're quarantined in France in Marseille, but I know, I know them well enough to know that they are contacting people in whatever way they can. And I know Max well enough, and he's using this time to write some more curriculum. And so ministry is still happening, happening uh, across the globe, ministry that we're a part of. And so our contribution is still needed. And so maybe this is a time for you to, to jump on and begin online giving. And if that if something you would like to do and you need some help, call the church office. Cindy will walk you through that process. Or, or maybe, uh, maybe you could just write your check. If you're like I am, you still write a check, put an envelope and drop it in the mail. Or drop it by the church office. Whatever is convenient for you. But I also want you to know this morning, if you have any needs during these kind of uncertain times or you just need somebody to visit with, you can call the church office, call one of the ministers, call any of the shepherds. We would love to help you. I want to end our worship time together as we begin. I want us to end 
with this passage. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. I know you're there in your pajamas. I know that you're comfortable. And it seems a little awkward, but I want you to say this with me again. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him and who have been called according to His purpose. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace.